And we are just about back. Look at that city. Look at all those people. It's actually pretty busy out there tonight. For now. Anywho, the drink's called a gorilla fart. <laughs> and I'm going to use my my egg holder that yes. uh, was gifted to me by Stephanie. It's an egg holder. It's a wine glass. And then it's a shot glass. It's everything so I need. Um, so a gorilla fart, you, you have a shot glass. Okay. Tequila. Yeah. Then Bailey's. But you got to like kind of... Uh, oh, like you gotta layer make it? it? Yeah, not even layer it. You pour it in and it'll sink to the bottom. Yeah. And you got to make sure it's stringy and really like a brain or really uncomfortable. Yeah. And then you take t a tiny drop of Tabasco and let it sit right on it. It's called a gorilla fart, and it is horrific, but it looks great. That is horrific. Yeah, it's terrible. Oh, well, God. Well, it's called a gorilla fart. We, I'm we, surprised it doesn't taste like sulfur. If you want to use uh, apple, if you want to make it something drinkable, uh, apple pucker. Ooh, uh, apple pucker is good. Uh, apple pucker, uh, Bailey's, again, it'll it'll clump yeah. and, and make it look like a brain. It kind of clot. Yeah. Make like it, it. It's called an alien brain. Yeah. And it just looks like a brain in a shot glass. And I've got it someday. Yeah. It explodes though. They don't mix. No. <laughs> and so you get this, and it kind of makes it congeal. So it, the Bailey's becomes kind of uh, kind of gross, but you know. I need to uh, sometime this month. I will bring what I need to make a Quentin Tarantini. <laughs> right on. Um, I haven't done it yet, <laughs> but I, I think it's brilliant. Um, yeah. I, th I think Tarantini. it needs. A, I think the martini glass needs like a bandaid on one side. Of it. <laughs> I mean, it is wearing a yellow suit. I that don't know. True. A I, no, that's right. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Um, I was thinking of the Marcellus Wallace, <laughs> and, um, and, and it's got to be pink, but it's got to really mess you up because right. does Marcellus Wallace look like a bitch? No. Exactly. A DJ Ray does not like the idea of the sound of the gorilla fart. I mean, who would? I don't know. It was the nineties. We drank a whole lot of them. A lot. I mean, um, not just. Not. Not just, hey, let's get a gorilla fart be ironic. It's like, let's get gorilla farts. This is a great idea. I do remember the point in college when you'd want to get the coolest, uh, order the coolest shots at the bar. Yeah. Like you'd get little baby Guinnesses, which are delicious. But they look like teeny tiny baby Guinnesses. They don't <laughs> taste like teeny tiny baby Guinnesses. Um, I always, I always won that because you know what my favorite drink used to be, what? and you can't get it anymore. It, they they made it illegal, uh, but it's a really great drink. And it's DJ Ray and Zima. Oh my God! I'll tell my Zima story next. But uh, I would go up to the bar and I would order a flaming Dr Pepper. <laughs> And unfortunately, I don't remember anymore. I used to be able to make them. Well, you can't remember anymore because you're <laughs> you, drinking them. Yeah, but uh, it was a beer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Half a glass, half a mug of beer, half a glass of beer, and then the shot. I want to say there was a little amaretto in it. Yeah. Ooh. And there was a little uh, rum in it, yeah. and uh, something else. They all came together just right, and you. And, oh, and one fifty one on top. Yeah. And you lit it on fire. Yeah. And you dropped it in the beer. And as you do. when it all mixed together, as you chugged it, because you have to shoot it. Oh, was it curdling? No. Oh. No, no. Uh, you put the, you got to make sure the fire's out, first of all. Learn that uh, one. Yeah. Learn that one the hard way. Um, I just imagine your beer going. I lost this, I lost this much <laughs> of my mustache. I'm not kidding. It was like, I was snaggletooth with a mustache. Awesome. But, uh, yeah, make sure, make sure, make sure the fire's out, and you shoot it, and it tastes just like Dr. Pepper. Yeah. If you did it right, it really tastes like kind of a flat. Yeah. Actually, not even flat. Just a Dr. Dr. Pepper. Pepper. Yeah. It was just one of those things. And then one of the others we drank, we had, uh, I told you about the Iron Curtain. Yeah. Which, was which I want to try. Rumpel Mints and Goldschlager. Yeah. yeah. It was a, it was a tasty drink. We'll lay you out on the floor. You don't even know what. Well, it, what yeah. You're um, have I told you about St. Petersburg? No. It's one of my favorite drinks. It's um, it's nothing, it's nothing exciting. It's a, so you take Stoli Vodka, which is the best vodka. If you don't agree... Go fuck yourself. You sold me on the Stoli, I gotta say. Stoli's so good. And you take um, orange bitters, and you shake some orange bitters in there, shake it up with ice, pour it into a oh, martini glass. Nice. It's just nice. It's very crisp. Yeah. You know? Um, but yeah, um, do you, did you ever try the Jolly Ranchers? Yes. Yeah, there was a whole series of those Jolly yep. Ranchers there for a while. They were good. Yeah, they were tasty little drinks. I, when I was in Germany uh, a few years ago, I went out with some people who I'd met to a shisha bar, and 
they ordered, um, what is it, a B-52? Oh, yeah, it's classic. Yeah, they ordered B-52s, and it came, and it was flaming, and they were like, um, stick your, uh, I was like, I've never had one of these. They were like, stick your straw in there, and just drink, <laughs> and stop, um, stop before you get to the fire, essentially. And I just read a story about a girl who burned her esophagus out, like, yeah. from doing it wrong. And that's why those are and illegal in Tennessee now. <laughs> I felt like such a nerd, but at some point I was just like, all right, I'll drink it now. <laughs> like, I was like, yeah. I'm not going to do that. That's the way you should do it. Because <laughs> do in the days of the Flaming Dr. Pepper, oh, I, I saw firsthand, because Poor Richard's was the place to go back then when it was yeah. still open. Uh, Poor Richard's over on uh, Walnut Street. And uh, the worst, <laughs> it was always the Flaming Dr. Pepper because it was a fad. It was yeah. the thing everybody wanted, but it was tasty. I saw a guy, he was so drunk, he hit the edge of the rim of the drink, yeah. of, the, of the beer mug. Yeah. And that 151 went all over the bar. It caught the whole bar on fire. And the bar caught napkins on fire. And the napkins caught other things on fire. The, the fire alarm's going off. Jesus. And, uh, the bartender, who apparently had done this a million times, just took a wet, a wet towel and went. Just like, I, got, I got this. Don't worry about it. <laughs> it's fine. Um, well, that's a good point. Jason says. Yeah. Uh, they're also freezing drinks with liquid CO two. I mean, listen. That have injured people. I love alcohol, as we all know. I also uh, love adventure, but I am not into combining those things. You know. I'll do it. <laughs> I I want to live and I want my esophagus for the rest of my life. If I if I thought I'd make it this long, I would have probably been more careful. Never served me before. <laughs> Why well, start now? The other drink we loved was uh it was called the stoplight. Are those still around? Yeah, we had stoplights. Stoplights are delicious. Three shots. Yeah. Th yeah. Three three shot glasses, each one a different color, and yeah. the colors in no two bars were ever the same. But no. they're really tasty. I always yeah. like the banana. The banana one is the yellow. Ooh. Then they'd give me the fucking lemon. Blech. Lemon? Yeah. No, that's where it's... I so, some places just don't care. I remember <laughs> when I was in college and I would first started uh, making cocktails at home, I would get like the uh, um, the mixers that you can get at like Kroger. Mm -hmm. And they had a lemon drop and a cosmopolitan. They were... Now, in retrospect, they're all awful. <laughs> they're just <laughs> disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we, we thought we were so grown up, and when I was, I don't know, twenty, twenty one, uh, we, we were always ordering our Tom Collinses, and mm. then I, I wanted to be really sophisticated, and I would order my zombie because <laughs> it was the only drink I'd ever seen yeah. on TV. Everybody ordered a zombie. Gross. Didn't even like it. But uh, then Why I learned. I, yeah. I slowly worked my way through bartending. And then you started realizing. I had an apartment where we had parties like every weekend, and I started having parties just to mix drinks. And I really liked it. So yeah. I've, I've always thought if I ever really need a job, yep. just have to go get a, a little training yep. and I'm ready to be yep. a bartender wow. because I have some experience, um, some practical experience. I know. I have a really cool uh, cocktail recipe book from the 80s that I would love to have a party where everyone brings like That's what I did. one liquor and one mixer. Yep. And then you just make all these drinks. Um, my apartment's not, no one's allowed at the compound. Yeah. That's not so. Don't don't invite yourself over. Nope. I, I actually moved to the compound because I had parties all the time at my old apartment, and suddenly people were inviting people I didn't know. Yep. Underage people had started to show up. That is dangerous. Uh, it was it just stopped being fun. The yeah. parties were out of out of out of control, and they knocked the house down. That helped me move out. Too. There is that. Um, no, when I was yeah. Go ahead. I was going to say, when I was in college, my cool drink, which I do genuinely like, um, my cool drink that I would order at a bar was a um, a Black Russian. Oh, yeah. That was always my favorite. I, I can't drink yeah. milk, so I, I can't right. I can't have white Russians. Well, and I, um, I can't even remember why... Um, I love white Russians, but I remembered... I, every time I went to a bar and tried to get a Black Russian, people would be like... The bartender would be like, what is that? And I'm like, yeah. it's a white Russian without the cream it's that's all it is it's delicious and it's delicious yeah, it's absolutely. so good it's less <laughs> sweet a little less sweet mm -hmm. it's well, the only reason i don't drink them now is because they have caffeine in them and oh that's right i'm not but drinking th they're also late. more like a shot i mean a they white are. russian is a cocktail you can sip 
The Black Russian is just a bunch of alcohol. I sip the Black Russian. <laughs> I did not. Let's see. What does Andrew say? Liz. I was, I was trying to read it first before I. Uh, listening, it feels I think like two year old who doesn't doesn't want his peas to touch yeah, his carrots. Yeah, that, that that typo um, on peas is what threw me off. Too. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> um, I've not ventured too deep into trying combination of drinks. Well, you should. There are yeah. a lot of great cocktails. It's a lot of I'll fun. I'll send you a list of my faves. My favorite, and this has become just the standard wherever I go, I love a good Manhattan. Yeah. I just love a good Manhattan. It's all it takes. Sometimes they're too sweet. Sometimes yeah. they're just right. But I, I like one, all the variations. One of my favorites now is, um, well, two. They're related. Um, Negroni's. Yeah. Love a good Negroni. Love a good Boulevardier. Boulevardier. Which one's that? A Boulevardier is a Negroni made with bourbon. Oh, yeah. Okay. And it's that does sound delicious. Good. I mean, well, it's delicious if you're like me and you like more uh, tart or bitter. Not tart, but bitter yeah. things. Because it's, it's definitely got a little right bitter bite. Um, it's really good. I'm kind of excited that uh, Laura's working down at uh, Sabore's now that oh, they're open. Because... Yeah. When she worked at Main Street Pizza, uh, yeah. we would just go in and she would kill time yeah. inventing new drinks. It's like, what do you think of that? Like, eh, no. She, no. yeah, she yes, had a no. whole, uh, she had a whole drink, uh, seasonal drink thing that was based completely off Quentin Tarantino movies. <laughs> it was great. Uh, it was great. Oh, what is it? Uh, um, the, the Strike Four Six. Is it? There was the Shoshana. I had the Shoshana, which I really liked. But she um, cared about her drinks. Yeah. I, I, know, I know. She's really she's, good. She's great people, and and she really was passionate about her <laughs> drinks. Yeah, yeah, that was an unfortunate typo. <laughs> it was hilarious, though. And, and notice how, how we both have the sense to read yeah, the no. moment we, we scan and see P. We're like, oh, wait, what? <laughs> let's see where this is going. Oh, which, man. Which proves, after 10 years of announcing, I finally started doing that. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's smart. Um, but anymore, I don't. I like cocktails. I love going uh, if I'm in Asheville, uh, top of the monk. Yeah. Uh, oh. Un, oh that's no! Not if it hits the there. floor after Let's Verbal's say, been I here, I don't know. I can't see if I'm actually oh, showing you all. Here, here, just. But uh, um, I just you, dropped the <laughs> verbal. Verbal was here. Yeah. I dropped this in the floor for my wine, and yeah, we'll wash that. I mean, off now later. I just have to drink it. Is what can you do? What can you do? There's no other Absolutely. way. That's all you can do. Um, yeah, unfortunately, the, the, <laughs> I live in a world of if it touches the floor, verbal has got it. It's, his, it's in his domain. <laughs> he can have it. Yeah. No, I, I do like I do like getting cocktails out. Um, the only problem is there's a really cool jazz bar in Asheville that has really good uh, martinis and sort of very hipstery. Uh, cocktails. Which one is it? I know of a couple. It's something like Gin Forty Two or something. Oh, okay. I mean, it's some name like that that's very hipstery. But it actually is a, it's a really cool place. The problem is each cocktail is like twenty fucking dollars. Oh no! You need to go I'm down like, to. Oh, I cannot remember the name of it. DJ Ray, are you still in the chat room? What's that? Uh, what's that? Co that uh, martini place we went to, uh, right across from Wasabi. Uh, anyhow, it's. They serve nothing but martinis. Yeah. They have a martini menu. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Uh, and they have jazz and blues every yeah. night. Uh, sometimes they'll have some local stuff, but it's always got a good groove yeah. to it. And uh, it got me... I was there with DJ Ray and my friend Kat, and we... And I had a Gibson. Yeah. And I became obsessed with Gibsons that whole summer. Uh, that's a, a martini made instead of with uh, olive juice you use pickled onions and pickled onion juice i oh, no. love it nope. i love the gibson and so i drank that i drank gibson's yeah. all summer and into the fall and now i can't touch a gibson now one of my, you're so sick of it i am come here these critters i was gonna show them show them the critter um they live in uh they live in walls in old houses and compounds I'm like told ours they're totally harmless they are totally harmless they're just little they're quick though they, they are quick i was trying to catch them um, yeah. Because I've got this window open for our outdoor cam, That's I'm right. sure. Um, I, shoot. My camera was missing. Uh, I was talking about Gibson's. That's oh, no. all I remember. But that place, oh, uh, 
<laughs> Jason remembers my obsession with uh, Gibsons there for a while. But I, I guess DJ Ray had to had to go. To oh, house. one of my favorite things I remember now. If you go to Tupelo Honey and get a vodka martini, classic vodka martini, they have these um, uh, green olives that are stuffed with pimentos that are oh, yeah. disgusting. Um, so if you tell them not to give you those and tell them to give you their pickled okra, oh, oh, it's so good. I mean, I'm, o- I'm okay with the... Uh with the pimento cheese and, and the olives, but I, the, the pickled okra is by far better. It is better. so good. And to me, I mean, I love, I love green olives. I love pimento cheese. There's just something about the combination <laughs> Submerged that I the drink. <laughs> <laughs> I think part of it is that the pimento, the pimento cheese kind of gives your drink a very cloudy, it does. cheesy kind of color. That's a good point. And it's very unappetizing. It makes it milky almost. Yeah. It does make it milky yeah. almost, and it's very gross. Uh, DJ Ray, what was the name of that uh, martini bar we went to across from Wasabi in Asheville? Uh, I, that's what, it's the one that kicked off my my Gibson obsession. You were you were there. Uh, that, that's why I was asking. But uh, those, were, those were so good. They had such a crazy wide variety of martinis there too. And there's another one uh, there's a little secret place. I don't. I'm not going to mention the name because it's where a lot of uh, performers and. Uh, well, you can uh, mention to me off off air. I'll tell. In fact, you you need to come with me sometime so I can introduce you to some people. Uh, it's where a, a bunch of performers and the offbeat yeah. and the and the odd people. And this place doesn't literally doesn't even have a sign. <laughs> they don't want they don't want yeah. people the to wander in off the street. <laughs> uh, they make the best martini yeah. that I know of in Asheville. It was fantastic. Now, I will say, one of my favorite places to drink in Asheville is um, the Champagne Bar and Book Exchange. Oh, really? Yeah, because they I just know what have... you mean. I've never been there. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I mean, as a, um, as a writer and a lover of alcohol, there's really no better place than a <laughs> literal bookstore that serves fantastic wine. That's nice. Um, and you go, and they have... I think they have some food, too, and they have uh, coffee, and but they have nice big leather sofas. Wow. And these floor-to-ceiling, almost, bookcases. And it just... It's just a nice place. Like, it's just... That's great. You can just go and enjoy the books. Right. You can just enjoy the books, sit there, drink some wine. That um, sounds great. I'll, I need to check it out. I know, yeah, I know yeah. exactly what you're talking about. It's, it's one of my favorites. Um... There's so many places in town that I end up, uh, each one with his different specialty and stuff. Yeah. Uh, and someday we'll do a show in Asheville. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We'll, we'll do when we get, because Asheville really is, I. it is in North Carolina, but it's part of the area. It is. Like, it's not. I, I spend so much time yeah. in Asheville, it's almost easier, it would almost be easier for me to live in Asheville yeah. and commute back to Johnson City. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm there uh, so much. Yeah. I just have so many. There's shows and there's shows and opportunities in Asheville that yeah. I cannot get here. I mean, I'm sorry, local area. Get it together. But when it comes to performance arts, people here don't seem to put a lot of value on it. No. I did a well, show. Well, we don't really have that many venues that are good That's for it either. That's the thing, either. and there's not. And I've, um, if there was a venue, I would be do, have yeah. already been doing my show. But yeah. we did a show for two years. I, I love this show. I put everything I had into this show, and the performers did okay. Mm-hmm. I could not get people to give to the show. Mm-hmm. I could not. Uh, no matter how much, I did. I never pleaded. I never begged. But I gave so much value. I think, yeah. and I tried to make it clear: the performers are keeping everything they make. Just please give us a little something. Yeah. I, DJ Ray was there. He was. Uh, he was our DJ and. Uh, Bubba was there, and I had another partner before that, and we we just needed we needed to make a little of the, of what the performers yeah. were making just to keep us going, right? And we just couldn't do it. Yeah. And it's I did everything I could. I would have huge crowds. We would sell out. Uh, yeah. It wasn't a sellout. We didn't really sell. We relied on donations and pay what you can afford at the mm-hmm. door, and we would have a standing room only, yeah. and still not make. Twenty dollars. Yeah, and I just, I just couldn't keep doing it. No, uh, and, and that is very. It's so frustrating. Yeah. All these different things that I've tried to do locally, yeah, over fifteen twenty years. Yeah, you build something wonderful. Yeah, and if it's not a Journey cover band, 
people are not going to get into it. Well, and yeah, we need um, tresses. That was tresses. the bar. Thank you, DJ Ray. Um, yeah, we really do need. Um, what we really need is a good performance art space. Yeah. That is not. Um, that's not like John City Community Theater or something. Like we need a place that. I mean, I think the closest we have right now is Willow Tree. Mm-hmm. That's more for. But bands, it's it's they. She is, and as she should be, yeah, completely devoted to music. She's right. a music listening room, yeah. And even though she will have these other performance based things, it's not what the right. place is devoted to, right? And, and I understand that. Yeah. I, I accept that. That's one hundred percent okay. And it's you've got places great. like Hideaway. He loves bringing in different performance things, but you can't, you can't bring in, uh, and forgive me. If you have a show at the Hideaway, you're yeah. going to bring in the Hideaway people. Well, and also, I know um, I've been a part of a vaudeville show, and that stage for the stuff we did in the vaudeville show right. just wouldn't, it, that wouldn't work. Yeah, it's um, great for bands if you have a very confined, right. not a lot of Right, but if you're doing movement. like escape acts or right. stuff like that, it's, we just need, we need a dedicated performance arts center. And you know the place that would work, now that I think about it. And they've just reopened. Okay, I have to tell two stories before I can tell this. I'm sorry. But I have to give context. Uh, Everett's is my favorite dive bar in town. And it's not even a dive bar. Everett's runs a really great place. It is a dive bar. (laughs) Don't listen to him. It used to be um, on Roan Street uh, next to the Family Dollar. It was once a a White's and then an IGA and currently a -a Save-A-Lot. You'd go down this really, really long yeah. hall. You walk through a Kubrick movie, yeah. and you're suddenly in a huge bar. It is exactly <laughs> like that. <laughs> and it was a weird, hidden little place. Yeah. And uh, Everett was once, in the 90s, he was the best bartender yeah. in town. Everyone went to Everett for the best drinks. And so he opened his own place. He moved across the street recently, and his place was open. Yeah. And now that's being picked up by the Mecca. Yeah. Who was downtown. Now they've moved yeah. up there into the Everett's old space. <laughs> I had to tell you that <laughs> because that place has a decent stage. Yeah. It's got a, a, huh. a wide yeah. open stage. It's made for a really big band yeah. can play on there. It goes from wall to wall. It's got steps leading yeah. up to it. That would be a perfect yeah. performance space. But with Mecca there, it's going to yeah. be mostly music again. Although they're great folks. Oh, yeah, yeah. And they would probably sure. work with me. But then again... That's a that's a kind of a it's people. kind of a specific yeah. crowd and that are loyal mecha loyalists. Yeah, and they're and they're loyal to their local music. Yeah. Which is good. And although Mecca also has comedy shows too. Yeah, um, yeah which seen, I think is great that comedy shows have finally yeah. caught on. We I, we tried to bring a comedy show to town ages ago. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, Jason. You've been there. Okay, when I've been to Everett's, it has... I'll, t- I'll, t- I'll take you to the same dive bars I took Jason to. Oh, I love it. I and love it'll, it'll change your uh, it'll change your opinion on Everett's. I guarantee you. Um, I want to mention right now. We mention a lot of bars and drinks and stuff. I want to say Tipton's Tipton Street is actually a great place to get pretty good cocktails. It really is. Their cocktails are super cheap. But they're also not... Okay, there are occasions where you go in and they make them weak. But, for the most part, they're super cheap cocktails and they're strong. Yeah. Like, they're just good drinks. And I haven't eaten there in a while, but their food used to be really good. Yeah. I, I don't know what it's like these days. Yeah. Because I have to give the other side of that, the thing that keeps me out of Tipton's, smoke but day and night. they do not have smoke before nine now. It smells like smoke it does smell like all smoke. day. <laughs> but they do have a place to sit outside. And it's cool. I mean, uh, I go there. I, yeah. I really enjoy going to Tipton's, especially now that I can go in there without people smoking all the way down the bar. Because it's one of those places, yeah. one of the few places left where there's that yeah. cloud of smoke when people get start smoking. It's one yeah. of the last last vestiges. So, But if you can get past that part, or if you can go before 9 and sit outside if it's a warm day, it's yeah, a nice place to... They have good drinks and good They used to have the best nachos in town. Huh. That chef eventually moved away. Yeah. But they had, without a doubt, this seven-layer monster nacho thing that I just love. I want to get that sled of nachos at uh, Holy Taco Sunday. Oh, it's good. I've had it. I've been there. 
Uh, Jason uh, continues his thought earlier where he's saying, I took him to the real dive bars. Everyone in the party got hit on, but not from anyone we wanted to grope us. Well, no. Yeah, it was... That's the point of a dive bar. It was me, me and this uh, guy with a big old fuzzy beard and a tank top. Uh, we bonded without They're called a wife beater. Without ever saying a word, we sang uh, we sang karaoke. Oh, way too long, and uh, I th- I think we had a moment. We had a little bro love. Aww. Yeah, yeah, we, we hugged. Romance. Uh, at, when I left, he, uh, he 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 grabbed my shirt and he gave me a big kiss on the cheek. Aww. And That's everybody sweet. in the place went totally silent and stared at him. And I was like, my work is done here. <laughs> he just disappeared to the night. And we went to the next dive bar. I love dive bars. I Whenever I go to a new city, I will look for the dive bars. I go to the, I mean, I go to the dive bars. I grew up in really rough and tumble honky tonks. I, I, li- I like them. I like them a lot. Usually, like, usually they're pretty good. I don't wear my ties in there. No, sometimes well, I do. Although sometimes I'll walk into a dive bar wearing my tie, like, next. <laughs> because that's really the only way to survive. That's right. <laughs> a good dive bar is really worth its weight in gold. Oh yeah, and Johnson City has. We have got some good ones. The, there's the dive bar that defines dive bars locally. The oldest bar in Johnson City is called Nappies. Nappies. Yeah. It's down on Broadway. Yeah. I went to Nappies when I was in high school. I was probably 14, and I, I was like, "Give me a beer," because <laughs> on TV they just asked for beers. Yeah. And she's like, "What kind?" And I didn't have an answer. I kind of panicked. I'm like, well, Bud, because that's Obviously. the only one I saw on TV all the time. And she's like, how old are you? I'm like, 22. <laughs> I'm 14. I look old. Young. And she's like, age. all right. <laughs> <laughs> that does not surprise me, yeah. even remotely. Um, the only reason I've not been, I've been in Appies a few times. The only reason I haven't been there a lot is because when I was in college, a few people got stabbed and killed there. Oh, you can't hold that against a place. I can. Oh, come on. When I was in... <laughs> I used to I used to go to Poor Richards. Yeah. Let's see. From 19... I can hold it against them for a while, though. We'll call it 85 to about 95. Yeah. Uh, there were not only, like, no, no exaggeration, 10 people stabbed. Yeah. There were three people killed. And Poor Richards, the yeah. college place... The the last one that I remember when I was still hanging out there, uh, someone had broken a pitcher and stabbed someone in the chest. As you do. Nashville Sound. I was standing there one night. A buddy of mine was a bouncer. Got stabbed walking into the bathroom for no reason. I have... A, you might know the answer to this. There's a rumor that at Poor Richard's campus um, several years ago... They they used to have these big competitions where you'd have to sit on an ice block, yeah, and sit there as long as possible. And I think you drank through it. I don't know the whole thing, but someone died from doing it because they drank so much and they were their body. I think I would remember cooled. that. I'm just curious. I think I would. remember It is that. a rumor, a Johnson City rumor that I'm gonna, that I'm gonna Google this one. Poor Richard's ice death, maybe. Yeah, that sounds good. Ice death. Yeah, let's see. Sending me messages. Dead man woke up during his own funeral in Zimbabwe. Nothing specific. Look, just look up poor Richard Johnson City uh, death. Okay. Oh, that's a good one, yeah. Uh, poor Richard's is dead because it closed June 6th, that says. Uh, parking lot... Fighting old Poor Richard's parking lot led to. I there is a um so there is a billiards place on West Walnut. Do you know the name of that place? The classic billiards. Yeah, classic billiards. I remember a few years ago I was driving down that road because I was going to Acoustic Coffee House, and <laughs> the funniest thing I've ever seen. There were three people in the parking lot. There's two guys and one girl, and uh, they were college age, definitely, maybe high school. But, you know, that they were young. And it was like a cartoon. Like, one of the guys was running, like, had his feet in the air and his arms like this. And the other guy had a taser. And I could see he kept, like, uh, like it was doing the little... Sparking it? Sparking it. And, like, chasing after him. <laughs> and I was, like, driving, like, what? 
the what the hell? Like I couldn't tell <laughs> um, if I should be helping, if I should be filming, <laughs> or just minding my own business. I picked the third. That's always but, a that's um, always a tough question. I, the, I was I was in classic billiards the week they opened. Yeah, and uh, it was nice. It smelled new. It. it was beautiful. Yep. It was well taken care of because it was brand new. And uh, I was like, well, I'm not much of a pool player. I always had a pool table in my parents' basement. Yeah. So I kind of burned out on pool as a kid. And uh, so I was like, huh. Well, I told my buddy, let's, let's head out. I don't really want to play pool. And so we step outside, one step outside. And a guy brushes past me, goes in. The door is still open. He pushes the door, slams the door open so hard that it stays open. Grabs a pool cue and just beats a guy with the pool cue without even slowing down in one fluid motion like he had been thinking about this the whole way over and he just started beating the crap out of that guy and I'm like well cops are coming I gotta go I'm gonna get out yeah I the, the few times I have been there um, I was in college and nothing like that ever happened but it was one of those places that had the weirdest assortment of people like seriously like just people from all sorts of different uh, groups that never interacted. Right. Like you had your preppy college students, frat boy college students who were playing. You had people who didn't speak English playing who were like <laughs> laborers. Then you had like your stereotypical dive bar crowd. Like Those were usually me and my friends. Yeah. And like there was five different crowds there and you're looking around going, what have I... Those are the best places. That's the oh, best thing about Everett's. I was literally at Everett's one night. I'm talking to a drag queen who had got who had, who was just about to go out for the show. Yeah. Uh, uh, they were the the drag queen had a bunch of friends. Uh, they were black. They were Puerto Rican, and a bunch of uh, these cowboy guys came in. I mean, they looked like the stereotypical yeah. troublemaking rednecks from the movies. They walk in and they and they walk up to us all who are having a conversation. Purple keeps getting stuff in my mouth. Oh, uh, sorry. It's okay. Keep going. <laughs> uh, they walk up and they're looking at the drag queen and I was like, "Oh crap, here it comes." And they go, "Well, that's just about the prettiest dress I've seen today." <laughs> Aww. And they were the nicest yeah. guys. I ended up with the the three Puerto yeah. Rican guys, the three the three redneck guys and a drag queen. Yeah. We had the best party. We, we we all ended up going to New Beginnings yeah. for the for the drag show. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no. It was Pharaoh's, a place downtown in Johnson City Pharaoh's. for the drag show. And we had a blast that night. Yeah. Never saw any of them again. Yep, no. Well, that actually brings up a good point. We've never really talked about newbies. Oh, that's true. That's true. I well, I have a lot of a lot of newbies experience from uh, various good times. Newbies is it, it's probably the best nightclub in town. Well, and as also, far as dancing, yeah, yeah, it is a great, and they have the drag shows, um, which uh, are brilliant or not. Right? Yeah, I was just about to say the same thing. It's, when they're great, they're absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Um, yeah, when they're not, you know. But honestly, is that our only? That's gay the only real gay bar. Technically, gay bar? if you if you set up your your uh, if you're in Foursquare. And you say that you do a check-in at Everett's. Mm -hmm. It says Everett's is a gay bar because originally yeah. it was opened as a gay bar. Oh. But well, he found there was more money just to be a seedy neighborhood well, bar. Well, sure. And That's I my think, theory. That's my theory. I think uh, the Crowbar, or whatever oh, it used to be yeah. at the Crowbar, used to be a lesbian It was called Tri Triangels, mm -hmm. I believe, was, was one of them. But yeah, but I think Newbies is the only... I think that's only, the only active one. Only right active gay bar we have, but it's it's so much more than like it's not go there even if you aren't gay. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's fantastic. It's it's really is one of the best party places in town. I it's don't fun. party like that a whole lot anymore. And so it just exhausts me. But my friend yeah. uh, Carmen uh uh oh Carmen Carmen's last name. Carmen's a drag queen. Anyhow, Carmen has opened a little uh, a little uh diner yeah in new beginnings now nice and so you can get a hot dog for like 75 cents nice. and it looks good yeah. and I, I know carmen uh very well i yeah. know i know that he would not let anything but the best food go out of there so you can get uh, all these great little just just snacky yeah 
hot dog cart kind of things, but uh, they look really good. And sometimes he'll go crazy and make uh, a ch- uh, uh, country fried steak and things like that, and it'll be on Man. the menu. But it's only like four dollars for that. I want country fried steak. I know. Right Many now. times I've thought about going out there just to get a late night snack from uh, Carmen. <laughs> the problem is finding country fried steak that is as good as the country fried they- steak they made for like. Um, uh, in middle school, like oh, I, like for whatever reason, I got you covered. I make a mean country. Fr- I'm a, I'm a country I love boy. A country fried steak. I, I had to learn how to make that from my. Uh, I made and the chicken fried steak, the uh, yes. deep fried. Oh, I, 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 with but, the white uh, I love it. white gravy, mm-hmm. white pepper gravy. Absolutely, the only way to go. It's the best. So oh, good. Oh my god! I know, I know. I'm just sitting here thinking, <laughs> God, why why can't I don't own a microwave, so I don't I I can't keep frozen meals for those moments oh. when I'm like really just wanting a specific thing. I do, but all I have right now as you can smell in my apartment is French onion soup. That's I made right. so much French onion soup last night. It was ridiculous. And I part of the reason I made cabbage soup earlier this mm. week and made a huge pot that is I no matter how much I eat on it, it just somehow replenishes yeah. itself. Yeah. That was a French onion soup. I, I you know, I, I took the little French breads mm-hmm. and I put the cheese on top, yeah. and I was stuffed after like three bowls. I could not physically hold anymore. Mm. Speaking of, I had the same experience today. I went to Tommy Tie and had the pho. Yeah, pho. Is there how's their pho compared to these? <sighs> these makes pretty good pho. The V's always has the upper hand because they give you a plate of fresh herbs. Yeah. You can't beat that. Right. Uh, Tommy Ty, their fresh herbs are thrown in already, but here's the thing. Tommy Ty's chicken is so frozen. Oh. It doesn't taste remotely fresh. Oh. It would be but how's the broth? really great. The broth is great. But uh, is the broth better than bees? I think in a lot of ways it is. Yeah. Uh, if we're just going by broth and not the by rest broth. of it. Because to me, the chicken is what kills yeah. Tommy Ty's. But just by broth, Tommy Ty, if you get the, the spicy broth, yeah. not the Thai hot, but the spicy broth, it's a little darker, it's a little richer. Yeah. But now, there's a there's a dark horse in town uh, for pho. Okay, we have Tommy Ty, which is good. Yeah. I mean, uh, don't let me make you think that the chicken is not worth eating. It's just, you can tell when chicken's been in a refrigerator for a while, and yeah. it just doesn't taste fresh. It's good. There's... V's, mm-hmm. Vietnamese cuisine, which is delicious. Yeah. And it, they give you the fresh herbs, throw it in there, and their broth is just right on down the middle. It doesn't matter if you have the traditional or the chicken. It's yeah. good. and But their chicken has had the same taste. Yeah. The taste that the chicken has been in the fridge and it's yeah. been reheated now. There's rainbow Asian cuisine. Yeah. Their pho is okay. It's it's all right. It's passable. Yeah. It's not. It doesn't compare to the, yeah. the other two. Blow it out of the water. I ate recently at Roots Vietnamese Bistro. I never even heard of that. Exactly. I wouldn't have. Uh, I was at a cardiologist up yeah. on State of Franklin. Yeah. And right across the street was this place called Roots, and I'm like, how have I never heard of this yeah. place? Went and checked it out. Tiny little Vietnamese. Run by Vietnamese yeah. people, which That's is unlike the other place. Good. V's is, is but yeah. this place is operated by Vietnamese yeah. folks. And I ordered just the traditional pho, and I got real pho. The right. only real pho that I've had in Johnson City right. is at this Roots. Right. When you get the the tendon, was the best I've ever had anywhere. Yeah. It's cooked like a noodle. You don't even notice. It's not. Sometimes you get it as a j- little gel- yeah. gelatinous thing. It's okay. I can yeah. eat it. But this, they were long strips. It was like another noodle you got right. in there with great flavor. They had the uh, the meatballs were in it, which mm-hmm. were the traditional kind of spongy. Yeah. Uh, I don't like the texture, but that's a cultural thing that I'll, I'll just have to get over. And it had the, uh, you know, kind of stuff that Americans don't yeah. usually eat in their pho. But that's what, this is the only place I'll yeah. eat this stuff. And it was delicious. What? So it's over in your state of Franklin? It's on state of Franklin. Um, best way to describe how, where it's at. It's the... F- What's closest to you it? You pass... Okay, here we go. We're coming from ETSU. We're going to go through the intersection at state of Franklin and market. 
we're going to keep going on State of Franklin. We're going to pass the the uh, Crystal yeah. on the right. Yeah. We're going to keep going up the hill. Uh, there's a right turn that goes into some uh, public housing. Yes. And then there's a strip mall. So it used it's where the Cam- Cambodian place. That's it. Be. The Cambodian place closed and the Vietnam Vietnamese place opened. In I'll have space. to try it because I am spoiled for pho. Um, well, first of all, I have a friend who made me pho. She's, um, and it was absolutely amazing. If it was uh, homemade pho, yeah. that's the best I've ever had. Um, Getmany is her name. She's a hairdresser around here, and she's amazing. Um, oh, yeah. The Roller Girls all talk about her. Yeah. Yeah, Getmany's amazing. And she made me pho once, and it was so good. Yeah. But in Iceland, there's this place called Noodle Station. And um, it's only in Iceland. Um in Reykjavik, there are like two places in Reykjavik area, and that is the best. They they don't call it pho, but it it's pho. Like it's, but it's the best noodle soup I've ever had in my entire life. Can only get it in Iceland. And you, try Roots. Roots is as almost as good as some of the restaurants I've had in bigger cities. In in Orlando, they have roots. they have Vietnam Viet Vietnam Town in Orlando, which is. Yeah. You know, five blocks of yeah. Vietnamese stuff, and and there's a Vietnamese re- little Saigon is right next to the Vietnamese market. Yeah. So, that's the best pho I ever yeah. had right there, and it was it was staggeringly amazing. Yeah. This stuff is really good, and the the next yeah. best was was homemade by a friend of mine. Yeah. And I only say next best because the love <laughs> makes all the difference in your pho. Yeah. Yeah, no, if you can ever get get money to make you pho, you do it. I will start on that. You do it. <laughs> um, I've thought about learning how to make pho, but it's so work intensive. It, it is. Even, you know, I'm the Instant Pot fan. Yeah. Even with an Instant Pot, that was one of the first things I looked up. How to fun. You still have to make a broth, and yeah. you still have to cook that, yeah. and then you get to start making Yeah, it's stuff. the broth that really... It's everything. Is, is everything. And um, I learned... From uh, some Vietnamese friends of mine, uh, pho is kind of the northern Vietnamese yeah. cuisine, and I cannot remember what it is. There's a southern Vietnamese version, which is another noodle bowl kind of thing, yeah. but it's got a completely different name. And I'm sorry, I can't remember it off the top of my head. But I haven't tried it. I don't know. I don't, I don't know the difference right now. But I intend to find out. I would love to go to Vietnam. I started learning yeah. Vietnamese at once because I considered being an English teacher there. Um, didn't happen. I stopped learning Vietnamese. But I still know some of it. I probably know enough French to start a fight there. Perfect. Yeah. I, I know enough Vietnamese to get people to talk Vietnamese Vietnamese to me, but I wouldn't be able to speak back to them. <laughs> right. Um, it's weird. It's the only tonal language I've ever tried to learn. Yeah. So you never know. I never knew if I was actually saying. Right. You kind of have to saying have that the right thing. <laughs> feedback channel to, to really right, get it like, right. Yeah. Yeah. It's con- It's. Yeah, makes sense. Makes Some total things. sense. Man, oh man. Uh, what are the places where there's stabbings? Oh wait. Oh, okay. One the more. Otter. One more bar question. Uh, yeah. Not bar question. One more bar story. And this is a place you. I would bet you don't know anyone else that went to this bar. There was a place in Johnson City for forty years called the Silver Spur. I know that bar. Oh, excellent. It was down on Broadway. Yeah. On the wrong side of the tracks. And it was a tough place. Yeah. It's where all of the bikers, the the thugs, the the angry old men. So it was near Alpine Liquor Store. It was yeah. It was about three blocks yeah. down the street from Alpine, yeah. and the building's still there. It had a cowboy yeah. on the on the sign that was hilarious. And because of that sign, I'd been fascinated with it since I was a little yeah. kid. So I'm in high school, and I'm like. I can I can drive wherever I want now. I'm going to Silver Spur. I grab my buddies, and we walk into the Silver Spur, and we were not welcome. I would not think so. We were we were punk kids, and they had zero tolerance for punk kids. Yeah. And but I was, believe it or not, kind of full of myself, and uh, <laughs> walked in, <laughs> anyhow, and muscled up to the bar. I actually pushed people out of my way and ordered. Surprised you didn't get stabbed. Give me a rolling rock. Oh my god. Yeah. So uh, people started uh, immediately kind of clearing space. Uh, long story short, I got thrown out of that bar. And when I say, cool. as the joke goes, when I say thrown out of that bar, 
Just imagine I was you, yeah. thrown <laughs> through the air in the parking oh lot out of that bar and told not to come back. It was great. Did you ever go back? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was back next week. <laughs> I got thrown out again. Did you keep going back till you got served? I, I think I just, uh, eventually I went back and they didn't throw me out anymore. It's not like, like it's not like anyone talked to me or recognized me. They were just like, whatever. It was like, mm-hmm. I'm like, huh, this time I'm not getting thrown out. And I, I, then I realized, yeah. I don't like this place. This is not my place. And I left. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I, I've i shopped at Alpine a few times. And even that place is a little shady. You know, they're under new management. This uh, this bottle that. of wine that I'm drinking right yeah. now came from uh, the Alpine. I, uh, they It's being now run by some Middle Eastern folks. Huh. And they uh, they have... It looks exactly the same. Yeah. But... It has slightly lower quality wines. Uh-huh. Or I should say, they don't stock as many yeah. of the good wines yeah. as they used to. Now they're all the, you know, the, the know, cheap stuff for people like me that don't drink wine a lot. I just know, I went in there once um, with a friend of mine. And so we were just shopping, l- looking for what we wanted. And this guy comes in, he pulls up in a big pickup truck, souped up pickup truck, comes in, gets into an argument with the person at the cash register, like, not doing anything actively violent, but also being super scary. And my friend and I were like, we were, we kind of tried to leave, uh, but we couldn't get around him. And, and that's a and really so we, narrow door with right. pillars on either side. So we kind of just kept shopping. But the guy kept going out and then coming back in and getting in oh, a fight geez. with the person. And I was like, I'm going to get shot. That, this, I, that's just you know, what's going to happen. <laughs> after you're shot a time or two, though, you don't even, you don't even worry anymore. Mouse is here. Which is burned down now, and they D- won't let DJ them. DJ Ray listing all of his favorite places. Yeah. Nashville Sound, Mouse is here, Bottoms Up Club. Okay, DJ Ray. Uh, Nashville Sound was uh, my Thursday night for, I don't know, eight years or so, because when the Nashville Sound was open, they had ladies' night on Thursdays. Now, guys don't get in free on ladies' night, only ladies do. I think I went to Nashville Sound on... Oh, yeah? On ladies' night That's the way to go. Or whatever was in there. Because, guys, if you got there before, like, uh, let's see, 8 o'clock was when ladies' night began. If you got there at 7.58... Yeah. You got in free because it was before they started charging for ladies night. So we yeah. would get there right at 8 o'clock, just before 8 o'clock. Yeah. We went in and we would stand around and wait because free beer started at 10. Free beer for what? All the beer you can drink for the night. But just for fun. Because it's ladies night. Oh. And, and people wanted to date rape some people. <laughs> there was a lot of beer. We would get a beer and we would drink. We would get in the back of the line and get back in line yeah. and get a beer. And so we... To say we binge drank is not really doing justice yeah. to how much we drank. And we we had... Uh, everyone I knew would end up at at Nashville Sound on a Thursday night. The whole WGHL crew, the CYB yeah. crew would come down on a Thursday night from uh, Bristol. Yeah. And we would... Me and the WGHL crew would start partying with the WCYB crew, which as far as I know hasn't happened since. And uh, that was the place to be. That was yeah. I learned a line dance there, badly. Yeah. I learned what truly shitty music was, was yeah. there, and yeah. uh, I saw uh, driving and, driving and crying there once. What's driving <laughs> okay. and crying? Don't oh, don't worry about it. Uh, I, don't, I don't want to talk about old ta- old fashioned stuff. Uh, what else we got? De- Mouse's ear was a trailer. No, they had a proper building. I think Mouse's Ear was a trailer. Mouse's they eventually built had... a building around it. Well, that's fine, but at some point it was a proper building. They did eventually build a building around the trailer, but it started as a trailer in gray. Uh, they made sure that it was uh, on the way out from the airport. Well, I thought that was, yeah, and I thought part of the reason they put it there is because at the time it was outside John City City Limit yep. before we annexed. Yep. And um, that's the only place they could go as a strip club right. at the and, time. And so it it became the longest running uh, strip club in East in, in, in this area in the Tri Cities. Yeah. Anyhow, before that there'd been the Hourglass, which I can tell stories of on another episode. Uh, there was also a Bottoms Up Club, a Bottoms Up Show Bar was what it was called. DJ Ray, which uh, 
girl Get it I, right. a couple girls I dated worked there. Coincidentally, I didn't know they were working there when uh, when I, I started dating them. Sure. Uh, Bottoms Up Club was down in Jonesboro. I think the building's still there, and it still says Bottoms Up on the top. Yes, no, I know that. Yeah. It's on your way to Jonesboro. <laughs> yeah, I don't. It, it's been it's been gone for a long while. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so DJ Radio is all of the classiest establishments ever to well, exist in East Tennessee. Sadly, now what, what the only strip club we have now is um, Fuzzy, Fuzzy Holes. Fuzzy Holes, and they don't strip there. Right. And Mouse's Ear burned down. Yep, Mouse's Ear, and they wouldn't let them rebuild. Nope, wasn't even an option. Yeah. It, they zoned them right out. Yeah. Um, Fuzzy Holes, you know, if you just want to screw with a city government... That's how you name your business. Well, I heard, I it, this is also a John City rumor. It may be true, but a John City rumor that Fuzzy Holes was given a business license because the people who approved it didn't know <laughs> what it was alluding to. That sounds right. <laughs> um, it, although, the name Fuzzy Holes, even if you don't know it's a strip club, you have to know it's not... Like how many other businesses could be called Fuzzy Holes? Yeah, the, um, a dog grooming place that a, deals with dogs' anal glands, maybe. A uh, purse, uh, a, a purse merchant who only sells uh, fuzzy purses. <laughs> fuzzy holes. <laughs> I know I'm reaching. It could happen. <laughs> I prefer the dog anal. Uh, yeah, the, the, extractors. Are you paying attention, buddy? You know what she's talking about, right? Verbal the dog. He's asleep. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, what what else could be called that? Is that like my first thought was donuts, but what kind of fucking donut would be fuzzy? Oh shit, we could start marketing fuzzy hold donuts and just oh, no. and, and just sell them. Oh, never mind. Anyhow, uh, oh. yeah, but fuzzy holes. I have not been to fuzzy holes. I back in the early nineties, I was down you, in, in the same building yeah. was the hourglass, yeah. and I was shooting a video for ETSU's. Uh, TV station at the time and one of my class projects was you had to get involved in a local situation and bring both sides of whatever the argument was on the show and you had to interview them yeah. and we had to produce this from beginning to end. Yeah. I was a producer and I had a, a partner who I don't even remember who it was anymore that was a producer and we chose uh, at the time it was a huge deal uh, with the hourglass yeah. it was required to start, the strippers were started, required to wear pasties. Yep. And at this time, that was going on. And so we had, uh, <laughs> I don't know why, we had a stripper on one side. I know why. And we had, we. I'm sorry, no, we didn't even get a stripper. We couldn't find a stripper. Strippers wouldn't come on. Well, of course we, not. We had a drag queen. We had a drag queen come on and uh, debate with uh, one of the city commissioners. Uh the pasty issue. Who agreed? Who? Which city commissioner agreed to that? I don't remember the city commissioner at the time. I, I'm trying to remember. Funny thing is, the drag queen that we had on turns out to be the uncle of my friend Morgan, who hangs out here on a regular basis. Small town, small town things happen. Uh, Sable Chanel was the name of the drag Sable queen. Sable Chanel. That's Sable, a good drag queen name. The the top rated drag queen in this part of the country was from right here in Johnson City. Sable Chanel. I, I wish I still had that video because you would not believe what Sable yeah. was wearing. I mean, I, th I can I have a pretty good idea. <laughs> um, well, um, we also have the drag queen that was that was on RuPaul's Drag Race. And I, I've seen her live. Yeah, I, at newbies. I, okay. Uh, um, go ahead. What's I have her name? A, I have a story. I, honestly, I cannot remember. I can't remember because I've been drinking a little bit. I follow her on Instagram. I know her real name, oh, but I'm not yeah, going to... don't do that. I'm not going to do that. Gonna, uh, God, how do I... She hasn't posted in a while. Eureka O'Hara. Eureka O'Hara, of course. I had parties at my old apartment. I've told you this. Yeah. I had art shows, and I would invite artists and performers, and we would just do mm -hmm. whatever, and we would have a great time. And this is what led to me leaving my apartment that I talked about in the episode a little while ago. And uh, a friend of a friend was there and just really down one night. He's like, you know, I just don't know what I'm doing in my life. I, mean, I just want to perform drag, but I don't dare do it. I'm like, you need to follow your heart and do what feels right to you. If drag is it... Get out there and do it. No more excuses. I think I will. Became Eureka O'Hare. 
I'm not taking credit. I'm just saying yeah. I gave a hell of a pep talk once upon a time. <laughs> Isn't that cool? And I, it was, do that? the show was already on the air and I'd heard all about uh, Eureka O'Hara. Yeah. And only after I was, I heard a friend of mine talk about, about him. I was like, wait, is that? And they're like, yeah. I was like, no way. And it oh, turns out to be someone that I, I yeah. knew when they were in college and I was having parties. It all comes back around to partying, partying with me. I don't know. I'm really not that much of a partier anymore. Anymore. <laughs> but I was really good at it for a long time. <laughs> um, yeah, unfortunately, I think uh, she had to drop out of yeah. RuPaul. Well, that's been... But but from her Instagram, it looks like she's traveling all over Oh yeah, but think of the, the country and doing shows. The demand and... that her shows must must be in now. Yeah, 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 for sure. Who cares? Who cares if she won? Yeah, exactly. Well, just, and... The exposure and the next yeah. level that that career is going to go to is yeah. fantastic. Yeah. And uh, you know, we have so many options with the show. I just need to get my crap together, and we need a bunch of patrons to uh, help. help us out with this equipment so that I don't have to rely on Wi-Fi. And uh, there's so many cool people that we could talk to that yeah. I know, but we have to go to them. We we yep. can't bring them to us on a regular basis. So if you want, patreon.com slash hometown. Or uh, if you look at the bottom right now, if you're live streaming, you'll see at the bottom is the uh, support the stream thing. Yep. Uh, actually, that needs to be deleted. Support the stream sounds like some sort of, um, you know, like uh, people who can't pee in public. Yeah. Uh, support the stream sounds like some sort of a uh, group. Honestly, I keep deleting that, but it, it appears back every week. No, I think it's hilarious. Oh, but I think it's even funnier that it says support the stream with a tip. There you go. Now that's funny. That's funny. <laughs> tip us at uh, paypal.me slash hometownjc. Uh, Patreon.com slash hometown. You can subscribe. We'll take out a little bit of money every time we do an episode. It'll only be the major episodes. So if we do bonus stuff doesn't count. Nope, you uh, just get the bonus stuff. I've been doing some behind-the-scenes updates and little things. I try to get the episodes up there before I get them up anywhere else. They're not always finished, but you get to see it and if you want. And I will say, I've been thinking about this a little bit, um, for if we get enough Patreon people, uh, so my third novel's about to come out, and maybe, just maybe, if we had enough Patreon supporters, it would come out first on Patreon. Oh, that'd be awesome. That would be awesome. So we'll, we'll we'll have to mention that a little bit. But uh, that's you know if if you want to help us out, if not, we're going to keep doing this. We'll be right here, mm -hmm. just about every week. Eventually, we're going to have to miss yeah, an episode. Yeah, there will be there will be a point. There's no way we 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 have. I don't know how we've managed to be know, here at the I same actually, time for like. Uh, well, yeah. What, 15, 16, 17 episodes now? Well, yeah, what's funny is tomorrow I leave uh, to go to a wedding out of town, and then next week I'm going to see Trevor Noah in Greenville, South right Carolina. Um, but I was even like, and I was like, oh no, I'll probably have to miss next week, and I'll have to talk to him about it. And then I was like, no, I'm just going to leave. I'm leaving Friday. Right. So yeah, I know. It's sort of it funny. Just, it just keeps it, working out because usually I, out. I get enrolled in all kinds of things, but yeah. not yet. But maybe we'll, maybe we'll uh, do some. Uh, Record some non-live shows. Yeah, I think I, I think that's a good idea. Out. I think that's something we need to do um, anyhow because some of these people we need to talk to yeah. live probably is not the way to go with some of the people I have in mind. Well, and some people too. Well, in just some places, it might just that, be better to do it. Yeah, because getting getting that solid Wi-Fi signal. I think if you saw our uh, Main Street yeah. Pizza extra, not the episode. The episode went great, yeah. but we moved like thirty feet yeah. into the building. And okay. it just fell apart. Yeah. And I don't want that to ever happen again. Yeah. Like, recording places isn't a problem. Right. It's just live streaming right. is a problem. Exactly. And, you know, as we get more support, maybe we can get better cameras and do a whole lot more stuff. I am a pro at this. I know I say that every week, but it's true. Well, that is about an hour. Yeah. We could keep talking all night, but we're not gonna. You're welcome. I have to pack. <laughs> That's right. I'm actually home all weekend. I have nowhere to be until October 14th. I'm announcing Chattanooga Roller Girls' last bout of the year. Woo! And then uh, October 27th, I'll be hosting Johnson City Brewing and the Johnson City Fire Department yes. are hosting a coat drive. Yeah. And that'll be uh, October 27th at the new warehouse facility for Johnson City Brewing. They're kind of giving people a, a, a 
yeah. a preview of it, uh, as well as trying to raise money for a good cause. Yeah. So I like Cat. She's always they're always asking me to do good stuff, and I think okay. I'll be back for First Fridays next year. I think First Fridays are going to be over before I'll, I'm back this year. But yeah. I get a kick out of doing the silly First Friday things. They keep coming up with the goofiest stuff, and I love it. I eat it up. (laughs) So that's it for another week. This is uh, Hometown East Tennessee Extra number 9, which is episode 17 overall. Thanks for joining us. I'm going to try to get the audio feed for our podcast up and going again if you would uh, subscribe to it. I know you've only found two episodes, but... It turned out to be surprisingly more expensive than I expected it to be. <laughs> but I've been saving my pennies in the in the uh, little announcer's jar, and uh, hopefully I'll be able to uh, get that rolling. And, and I'll warn you, there's going to be a dump of episodes as I mm. get caught up to uh, current. So I'll probably do the current episode and one old episode until I get all the episodes up. Uh, DJ Ray's asking, are we going to do an Asheville show? Yeah, I think we could do an Asheville show. I've got I've got friends at yeah. uh, actually the auditorium would probably let us do a show right from there, and I'm pretty sure they've got decent Wi-Fi. I'll have to check with them. But we'll definitely do. I mean, we haven't been to Asheville together yet, but we've talked about it a lot. Right. Um, it, the stars just haven't aligned yet, but um, we'll definitely we'll definitely go. Oh, thank you, DJ Ray. He yeah, says thanks. we did a, it was an awesome show. Well, we appreciate it. We just like talking about local stuff. Yeah. Wait till we. Wait, wait, wait till we do the uh, the show about the controversial stuff one day. Uh, ooh. I know, we, Actually, didn't, we didn't piss anyone off. No, no. I mean, maybe with the first stuff, but... Too, too, usually we're trying to keep, get people to watch us, so we're using lots of honey as bait. That's true, but maybe what's more it's, attractive is... And believe me, we are more than capable. Well, yeah, we are more than capable. <laughs> I could have gone off on that Christian haunted house thing like um, nothing else. Me too, and it, it's not even personal. It's just philosophical. For me, it's both. I understand. I got that. I got that too. But uh, I won't. I won't drag my drag you folks into my personal stuff yet. <laughs> we'll so get there. that's it for this week. Yep. Thank you all for joining us again. Uh, we're going to be back next week with a whole new uh, episode 10. Uh, lots more stuff going on locally that I'm sure I don't even know about yet. I've started picking up loafers again. This is how committed I am and to you folks. I'm going to a wedding on location at a, a place near here that a lot of people here will know about. Oh, right on. And I will talk about that. Tales of the I won't, uh, I won't say what it is yet, but where it is. Uh-huh. Yeah. That'll be a good time. But. So we will see you here, same bat time, same bat station. Thank you for joining us. Everybody that joins us in the chat room today, and everybody that stuck around from the first show, thank you so much. Yes. Let's go back outside.